it's another sad moment in our country's history. The 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump, has yet again been indicted by the Biden DOJ, a political party in power that is now repeatedly using police force to indict and arrest and potentially eliminate its political opponents from competition. This is a politicized prosecution. It is a political persecution through prosecution. Now in a third indictment, just in a matter of months against the person who is still at present, the lead contender in the Republican primary for U.S. president. I want to be very clear. I am running for U.S. president in that same Republican primary. It would be easier for me if Donald Trump were eliminated from competition. That's not how I want to win. This is not about politics to me. This is about first principles. We do not want to become a country where the party in power is able to use banana republic like tactics to eliminate its political opponents. Yet I'm sad to say that's exactly where we are. The allegations in this indictment fall flat. It is wrong and incorrect and inaccurate to place blame for what happened on January 6th at the feet of Donald Trump. I said this at the time. I've said it ever since then. I continue to say it today. I would not have made the same judgments that Donald Trump did in how he handled that day. But that's different from saying that he committed a crime. He did not. He specifically told the protesters that day to behave peacefully. The First Amendment in this country gives political protesters the ability to express themselves and their opinions freely. Donald Trump was not responsible for what happened on January 6th. You want to know what was responsible? I said this in the days after January 6th, 2021, just as I say it today. Systematic, pervasive censorship in this country. That was after a year where we had told people across this nation that you had to stay locked down in your house, in your basement, and shut up, sit down, do as you're told. If you question that, you're racist, you're anti-science, your social media accounts were silenced. You had to stay home and lock down unless you were part of BLM or Antifa, in which case it was perfectly fine to roam the streets of this country and burn many of them down. That was the double standard that then applied and said that if you said the virus originated in a lab in Wuhan, you were again a racist and had your internet accounts shut down. You were then told you had an election where you could express yourself to put the right person in charge of fixing these problems. And instead, your accounts were suppressed if you sent a mere message saying that the Hunter Biden laptop story from the New York Post was real. You had your accounts locked. Even the New York Post had its own account locked. And if you repeatedly then tell people they cannot speak, that is when they scream. If you repeatedly tell people they cannot scream, that is when they tear things down. And I think we are making a grave mistake in this country by trying to pin the blame for that at the feet of one man. If we refuse to learn our mistakes from, from our mistakes in the past, we are doomed to suffer an even worse fate in the future. I worry that will create a country where January 6, 2021, was a friendly parlay compared to what's actually to come. I'm running for president to make sure we don't march towards some kind of national divorce. But the first and most important step that we as candidates can take in this race is to speak and speak forcefully on the side of principle to say that even if we're competing against Donald Trump, as I am, I do not want to see him eliminated from competition using these politicized tactics. It is wrong for our country. It is wrong for our future. I call on my fellow candidates to condemn it. And I call on President Biden to do the right thing and drop these politicized charges. That's going to be a first step towards uniting our country.